and Julia Sondu, showing you where development is happening. Please come and join us. As an indigenous IT powerhouse with global connections, Xenox is proud to be the first internationally certified branded computer OEM, original equipment manufacturer, in West Africa, the first OEM in West Africa to receive the WHQL, Windows Hardware Quality Labs, certification and the first computer hardware manufacturing and ICT integration company in Nigeria to receive the ISO 9001, 2000. Leonard Stanley Namdi Eka, born February 22, 1956 in Imo State, Nigeria, is a Nigerian businessman. He is the founder and chairman of Xenox Group. Technology has been demystified. If an American can do it, I can do it better. And I boast that I can do it better because I understand the architecture. Africans are taking control and this is what civilization is all about. He is also the chairman of Conga.com. Eka was born in Ubermiri and Baitoli, Imo State to a middle-class family with three brothers and two sisters. His mother was a dietitian, and his father was a nurse. Leo Stan Ecker started Xenox Technologies Limited in 2001 to manufacture computers. He ensured that at launch Xenox computers already had the WHQL certification, the first in sub-Saharan Africa, consolidated five years later with the attainment of the NIS ISO 2000 to 9001 QMS certification. In October 2013, the company announced the production of its computer tablet line named Zippard. In February 2018, Eka's company Xenox acquired Conga.com from its owners buying 99% of the total company shares. Leo Stan Eka, Africa's technology miracle child. Rarely in this part of the world would you find a man like Leonard Namdi Stanley Eka, better known as Leo Stan Eka. For starters, Leo Stan, as he is fondly addressed, is not your regular fellow. He ranks well and truly as an unusual entrepreneur, one who is not only absolutely outstanding at what he does, but a man who also stands head and shoulders apart from his peers. The story of technology in Africa and in his native Nigeria would decidedly be incomplete without a mention of the many pioneering roles Eka played in this domain. But it is in chronicling his amazing journey of well over three decades in the field of technology that some of the exciting qualities that make Eka outstanding align in sharp contrast. Born on April 22, 1956, in the rustic town of Ubermiri in Mbaitoli, Imo State, Eka is of the baby boomer generation, often defined as people born from 1946 to 1964, during the post-World War II baby boom. Remarkably, members of this generation fall among the most digitally disadvantaged, especially when compared to their more technology-savvy counterparts in the millennials or Gen Z generation. In fact, research by the Pew Internet Project shows that baby boomers dominate globally among current internet non-users. But it goes even beyond that. More than half of the members of this generation say the main reason they don't go online now is because they don't think the internet is relevant. For these ones, take away Facebook or WhatsApp and you cut off probably their only links to the digital world. Yet, Eka, who was recently honored as the Forbes Best of Africa leading tech icon, remains an outlier. For decades here in Africa, the man has not only dominated the technology ecosystem, churning out innovations by the dozens in a sector which remains alien to many of his contemporaries, but which for him is a playground where he has continued to find relevance and expression, giving the millennials and Gen Z something to think about and look up to. In his words, despite my age, I feel very young. My eldest son will tell anyone who cares to listen, ha. Huh? Chairman is even younger at heart than many of us in the younger generation. This is very important because I operate in a sector that is dominated by young people. I build products and solutions that are largely consumed by the youths, so I must understand their mindset and reasoning. I have to be like them in order to succeed, he once stated at a public event. But if his unusual pizzazz as a technology guru ranks as a misnomer, it would be in keeping with the rest of his nature. Restless but blessed with the brains of a genius, Eka's personal life story further demonstrates the peculiarities of a maverick who stands apart and alone, a miracle child or digital orphan, as he often describes himself. 
He has never tasted alcohol from childhood till date. Neither has he ever smoked, be it the regular cigarettes or any of the more exotic stuff that are as varied in their names or configurations that abound today. It is interesting, while restating the unusualness that distinguishes Eka, to observe that unlike many Nigerian entrepreneurs whose little beginnings are often glossed over or consigned to the rubbish heap of history when they emerge, Eka's remarkable rise to the pinnacle of success as a digital entrepreneur is thrown into sharp relief by the obstacles, the challenges, the struggles he faced, all of which he surmounted on his entrepreneurial journey. It is not a secret that Eka used to live in the same apartment that housed his first office, or that his unerring knowledge of Lagos roads comes partly from the fact that he used to drive a commercial bus for fun with his friends. A devout Catholic and former mass servant, Eka, unknown to many, cheated death early in life, surviving a ghastly accident that left him with multiple stitches in his upper left arm while on the verge of leaving the country for studies abroad. A development which ultimately resulted in him missing resumption in the UK and eventually opting for India, where he enrolled for a degree program in economics at the highly respected Punjab University. But the entire adventure would appear as if fate was playing a hand in forging the man's destiny. India, at the time Eka stepped foot there, was a nation struggling to convert its huge potential and undoubted human capital to wealth. Perhaps, not surprisingly, his time in India contributed a great deal in imbuing Eka with some of the remarkable fighting spirit and uncommon zeal to succeed he is renowned for. As he puts it, studying in India was a great turning point in my life because I found the economy of India a realistic economy. Lest we forget, it was in that same India that Eka met the cerebral Chioma Eka, the love of his life and reliable sidekick, the woman who would become his wife and who at the time, turned out to be the only Nigerian studying mathematics at the university. Moving on from India and seeking further studies in the UK, Eka had his eyes open to an environment which saw no future for Nigeria or Africa in technology back then. His tutors at Ireland's Cork City University, where he elected to study computer science, had painstakingly studied his temperament and character, correctly identifying him as a restless, smart and business-minded chap who would probably end up frustrated if he returned to his native Nigeria at the completion of his studies. But Eka has never been one to run from a challenge. Armed with a postgraduate degree in risk management from a shared course at Nottingham University and City University, London, he had been faced with the prospect of completing a master's degree in business law at what is known today as London Metropolitan University or terminating the program after eight months and converting his final school fees to return to Nigeria and launch his first company, Task Systems Limited. Eka chose the latter and the rest, as they say, is history. For a man whose early ambition was once to own the largest transport company in Nigeria, Leo Stan Eka's pivot to the technology business, as well as his subsequent dedication to creating a digital identity for Nigeria and putting the country and Africa, by extension, on the global map is the stuff of legend. Eka's many exploits, pioneering desktop publishing and computer graphics in West Africa and computerizing over 95% of media, multimedia houses and book publishing houses in Nigeria in 1987 through task systems, pioneering digital dispensing fuel pumps in partnership with Elf Petroleum and Schlumberger, France through his company Stanoil after he was cheated by a fuel attendant using the analog pumps, launch of the first locally assembled and internationally certified computer brand in sub-Saharan Africa, Xenox Computers, pioneering sub-Saharan Africa's leading and biggest technology products distribution company, TD Africa, Deployment of the single largest e-library and wireless cloud rollout in Africa. His status as the early pioneer of e-commerce in Africa with BuyRightAfrica.com. His sterling role in midwifing the biometric digital revolution in Nigeria. Saving the country huge embarrassment by delivering the Independent National Electoral Commission INEC, voters registration in 2006 when foreign contractors could not deliver after months of promises repeating the feat four years later when he supervised the biggest single ICT digital rollout in Africa with the deployment of the Direct Data Capture DDC, 
project with INEC in 2010 valued back then at over $170 million, among many others too numerous to list out here, are well chronicled. But it is to the credit of his indefatigable nature and passion for Nigeria that, at an age when many of his peers were considering calling time on their careers, Eka decided to take on a challenge that even the most optimistic of his backers saw as a suicide attempt. In early 2018, Eka and his team had announced the acquisition of Conga, a once thriving indigenous platform which held the status of being one of the latter-day pioneers of the new wave of e-commerce in Nigeria, but which, at the point of acquisition from its erstwhile owners, South African headquartered Naspers and Swedish-based AB Kenevik, was almost on its last days. It was a piece of business whose echoes reverberated around the corridors of the global business world. For many, the acquisition of Conga would be the final straw that would break the irrepressible juggernaut that Eka represented. Such was the enormity of the task that lay in resuscitating the brand and restoring its glory days. Or so it seemed, four years down the line, Conga, written off by many, has under new management, not only risen from the ashes of its near exit from the Nigerian e-commerce market, but is now the toast of desirous investors the world over and being touted as the potential leader of e-commerce in Africa. It is proof of the magic wand that Eka wields, that gifted touch he brings to bear and the sagacity, mastermind at work behind his always clean-shaven pate that Conga, which reports reveal was once hemorrhaging about N400 meters per month, is today the first African e-commerce brand to turn a profit. No doubt, Leo Stan, as his friends call him, is a national treasure, but he remains a man whom many believe, and rightly so, has hardly received the kind of recognition and acclaim he deserves from successive Nigerian governments. A man of extreme humility and a renowned philanthropist, Eka's massive contribution in promoting digital democracy and ushering millions of Nigerians and Africans into the digital ecosystem remain unmatched across the continent. As he turns 66 today, it would appear Eka, who has never hidden his ambition of building the first and biggest 360 degrees integrated ICT conglomerate out of Africa, has come full circle on his wish, especially with the addition and impressive turnaround of Conga, now a flourishing e-commerce giant, to a formidable cast of thriving entities in the Xenox group with proven and advanced competencies in a wide variety of tech-driven deliverables across verticals. But it is also in keeping with Eka's status as a rarefied, unusual breed of entrepreneur that one would be hugely surprised if he quits innovating, even at 66. As he succinctly phrased it, my strategy from childhood as a poor fellow was to cause disruptions, Hence the decision to venture into technology which allows room for constant innovation. The only way I can sustain my dominance in the marketplace is through constant innovation and this is tied to sleeping less and eating healthy. It is important that in that hunger to be successful, you institute strong auditable system and structure which sustain your business. At 66, Africa's technology miracle child remains the poster child of all that is great in humanity. This is the end of our program today, see you on Intervlog same time tomorrow. Thanks for watching, please like and subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to get new video updates. Thank you for watching Intervlog. Thank you.